We thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Focus. I'm Craig Ford. Our guest for the entire 30 minutes really needs no introduction. He is U.S. Senator Roger Wicker of Tupelo and, of course, of the state of Mississippi. Senator, thank you for joining us. Glad to be back in the studio, Craig. Uh, we want to uh, touch on a, a lot of things during this 30 minutes. Uh, obviously, you're home during the, the uh, congressional August recess. But uh, I want to start with, with foreign affairs, specifically Egypt, since that's been the big story the past few weeks. And I'm hoping you could sort of educate us as well as inform us. And I'll start by asking this question. As the U.S. Senator from Mississippi, why is what's happening in Egypt important? Well, that is a good question because I, I must say I don't get many questions about Egypt as I go around the state. I haven't gotten many questions uh, this August uh, about Egypt, but it is very important. Half of the Arab world lives in the country of Egypt, so I mean, they're concentrated there. Uh, a huge conflict going on now between Muslim extremists the Muslim Brotherhood is actually the father of, of a lot of these extremist groups, in, including Al-Qaeda. So I think, uh, I think we should take a strong position uh, doing what we can to, to help the more moderate groups in Egypt oppose the Muslim Brotherhood and oppose Al-Qaeda. Um, Clearly, we're, we're concerned about what's going on. Civilians have been killed. The, the military doesn't have clean hands. But, but the military has been the stabilizing force. They're the group that works with our intelligence services on intelligence gathering, on fighting Islamic e e extremism. So uh, we, um, we're doing what we can diplomatically. I think our Secretary of Defense correctly said the other day, we don't have a lot of... Uh, really to influence this sovereign country. They're doing their own things. But to, to the extent that we can strengthen the moderate groups and do what we can to diminish the influence of the Muslim Brotherhood, I think we should do that. So am I to, uh, correct in assuming that what you're saying is you're, you're okay with how the Obama administration is handling the, the Egyptian situation? Not really. I, I wouldn't have canceled the military exercises. Uh, if, if we're going to cancel military joint maneuvers based on, uh, on democratic elections or not, then we're going to have to cancel a lot of joint exercises with the Arabian countries. I mean, they, uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, they don't have democratic elections either. So uh, I think we need to do things in our own national interests, and that should be the test. Uh, we wish the Egyptians had Jeffersonian democracy like we have in the United States. But, but basically, we deal with the Egyptian military because it's in our national interest. Because they have uh, ensured three decades of peace between Israel, uh, our strongest ally in the region, and the Arab world. They, they have held to the Camp David Accords signed by President Carter, and that's been important. In return for them, uh, uh, adhering to the Camp David Accords, we have um, supplied money according to the treaty for their military, and what does Egypt do with it? They turn right around and they buy it from the United States of America. So it's really been a pretty good deal for us, and we haven't had war in the Middle East in the last three plus decades. Uh, it's a tough situation, uh, but we've got friends over there and we've got enemies, and the Muslim Brotherhood is a sworn enemy of the United States and the Western way of life. And I guess in a, in a the world where the United States does not have a lot of friends, you really don't want to mess up a good relationship. In a... uh, you, you don't want to make uh, bad matters worse. Yeah. The, the, these guys don't love us. Uh, I've been to Egypt several times, but the leadership of the military has worked with us on things that help Americans live more safely. So for the folks who may be saying the United States should either reduce its aid to Egypt or cut it because of what's going on, your response to that would be what? My, my response is that 90% e that, uh, of everything we send to Egypt um, secures peace in Israel, which most Mississippians stand for, and also it, it turns right around and is spent creating military manufacturing jobs in the United States of America. It's not cut and dried. 
Uh, there are no really great guys over there, but uh, on balance, um, I think we ought to be careful uh, with a relationship that's given us peace for three decades. I'm going to take, turn our uh, focus toward issues more closer to home. Uh, you've obviously been crisscrossing the state during right. the recess. What, what have you been hearing from folks in, in your travels uh, to the coast, to Jackson, and even here uh, in this part of the world? Well, uh, we've, we're concerned about base closure, and we're concerned ab about uh, not losing our, our great military presence in Mississippi. But uh, beyond that, that sort of local issue, Mississippians are concerned about this budget deficit. They're, they're concerned about the, the $17 trillion national debt. And then uh, Mississippians see Obamacare uh, coming closer and closer to actually being implemented into law, and they're concerned about it. And I think that, that reflects a national concern where we see more and more people, including Democrats now, including labor unions, expressing alarm about what this uh, well-intentioned but misguided uh, law is going to actually do. You know, we saw uh, a letter from three or four of the, of the largest labor unions saying the Obamacare law is going to destroy the 40-hour work week. You know, this, these are not uh, partisans. Uh, if they're partisan in any way, they, they, they are pointing out they helped uh, President Obama get elected and reelected, but they're concerned about this Obamacare law because it's going to destroy the 40-hour uh, work week. The um, Chicago Tribune just this week uh, in the president's hometown, it's his hometown newspaper, they called Obamacare a monstrosity, and and they said we need to delay this. We need to take a step back, rework it into something that can work for for most Americans. So we see uh, Republicans, certainly we've been sounding the alarm uh, because we, we don't think this is the right solution to health care. But we see more and more people from the left saying, uh, as the chairman of, of the Finance Committee in the Senate, Senator Baucus, a Democrat, said, it's a train wreck coming and we really don't know what this is going to mean except... We've already seen skyrocketing insurance rates. And at the end of the day, uh, even if it works as predicted, there's still going to be 30 million people without insurance. A Mississippian watching this broadcast today, uh, they've heard all of this talk about Obamacare. But, and obviously there could be some changes with it between now and, say, this time next year. What do they need to be aware of? What do they need to know as far as the changes that, as they stand today, could affect them and they could be, that they could be surprised by? Well, they're seeing the effects right now. Um, if I could back up, sure. when Obamacare was passed, 75% of Americans had good insurance coverage and were pleased with their insurance coverage. And they were told by the president, they were told from the State of the Union message on, and repeatedly promised this, if you like your doctor, you'll get to keep your doctor. If you like your health care coverage, you get to keep your health care coverage. And now we're finding that's simply not true. So. Um, I would say to to Mississippians that I am uh, that at least this senator is trying to postpone Obamacare. I would like to defund Obamacare. I would like to repeal it and and uh, and and would vote to do so if the leadership would bring such a bill forward. I don't think that's going to happen. So I would say to, to Mississippians that we stand ready to work with them and try to, to uh, make sure they can, they can live through it. But we need to replace Obamacare with a system that injects that element into health care that has worked throughout the decades to lower prices in America, and that is competition and market forces. Is that doable? Uh, well, we surely should try it before before we move to what the Chicago Tribune just says is yeah. this monstrosity. So uh, we advocated um, we advocated exchanges.